This week in comic books, uh, Lazarus Planet from DC. I'm going to tell you right now, I think this is a great jumping on point. You, let's ride this train. I think this is going to be a good, it's a crisis event. They all are in DC. But I think this is it. Also in the lands of Marvel, we're going to hit two points of philosophy today. The difference between motivation and discipline and the famous, don't forget where you came from, saying we're going to trash that stuff. So definitely want to check that out. And of course, in Independence, what happens when you take some of our beloved fairy tales and you throw them into space? It's actually kind of cool. Like, I, it's actually kind of cool. So we're going to talk about some of that too. And a bunch more other comic books. But first, I got a new promo for Coffee Brand Coffee that I recently made. And I want your opinion on it. So check this out. Hey, what kind of people drink Coffee Brand Coffee? Check this out. This guy, this guy, this lady, this guy, oh, definitely these guys. Yes, even Santa Claus, Crackhead Santa Claus, these little coffee. So definitely check out Coffee Brand Coffee, link in the description down below. Use promo code POKEHANDJOE, save yourself 10%. Coffee Brand Coffee, it's just for badass people. All right, welcome back, you wonderful weirdos. It's a new week, which means new comic books. So we're going to run down and see if we see anything interesting in these and just give a quick synopsis of this week so we can hit on some much cooler stuff. So first, right up off the bat, Lazarus Planet Alpha 1. And much like this John Jane cover, which is a 1 in 25, <laughs> it's, a, it's a great story. I'm really liking it. It's very, there's a lot going on in this book. And you may need a little bit of pre-referencing some other comic books, and I hate doing that myself, so I can understand the annoyance there. But some of the main titles that you kind of want to look at, Robin, back when he fought on a, uh, the island where the first appearance of Mother Soul was. You definitely want to check out some of that World's Finest stuff that happened. Monkey Prince, not just to kind of fill in some gaps there. And, of course, uh, Robin versus Batman. Uh, storyline as well but if you picked it up right here and just rolled with the woo woo magic storm that's happening and hey we got some big baddies here and then we got another big baddie and then we got two other big baddies and we got to split up and fight this guy and then we bring out some of our older comic book heroes who kind of break free to kind of help um i i think it, i think people would enjoy that i ugh, always hate recommending but I will say I'm enjoying this, and if we've ever agreed before, you'll probably enjoy it too. If we just absolutely disagree on everything, then don't buy this book. <laughs> but all in all, and I'm super happy to get a John Jane cover. I'm going to be hitting up some comic cons here soon. If I see him at, I'll be sure to get him to sign that. All right, moving on. Danger Street, number two. So this picks right up on the sad story of, unfortunately, the death of Good Looks. Um, the character, young man, he ended up dying. Sad funeral in this, but then we pick it right back up into this kind of mystery. So we got Warlord and Star who were trying to be part of the Justice League. They thought they could summon Dark Side so they could kick his butt. It turns out it was Atlas from the Bronze Age. And now, in this story, we're being introduced to two more characters. One, Manhunter, the robot one from like back in the day. All these are based off of the, uh, oh, what was it called? DC Presents series, issue one series. Remember those? A lot of these characters are coming from there. Um, and we also get introduced to Darkseid. He actually has a role in this one now. And surprisingly, he's not his usual self in here, which is weird. Um, but a lot of this is kind of dealing with uh, multimedia and how it works today and how you can get a talking head just to say whatever you want and any conviction or any passion as long as they can drag it out. Um, and then we have this whole underlining story of who, what, kill, you know, good looks, one of our characters in here. Uh, all in all, it's a good story. I wouldn't call it a very action-packed story or even suspenseful for that matter. I, I just like weird stories like this that kind of have a bunch of moving parts. It's like a Guy Ritchie movie. Just say it's like a Guy Ritchie movie. It's, it's like a Guy Ritchie movie. It's just a lot of moving parts, a lot of characters, and a lot of things happening. And then as the story progresses, hopefully it all kind of comes together and makes sense. All right, next. Don't, we talked about this last week. Covers lie. Lie, you covers. This is actually a Spider-Man story. And I knew that when I bought it, but my wife said if I didn't get the Mickey Mouse cover, uh, 
she would leave me. And I kind of like having her around. So I bought it. Which means if we buy a comic book, we read a comic book, right? Somebody took the time to write it, so we're going to read it. Uh, this is an amazing Spider-Man story, and this is dealing with the deep web. Or dark web. And this is dealing with the dark web. Uh, so in this one, we got uh, Peter Parker and, and Jameson are down in, I'm going to say limbo, but it seems more like a hell to me, where everything's kind of weird. The demons kind of mess up the names. It's kind of quirky and weird. It's not like scary hell. It's like like Disney's version of hell. Oh, that makes sense now. Anyway, so... Yeah, that's happening in here, and all the demons kind of say names wrong and stuff like that. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to get uh, Jay and Parker to kind of act like the way they do on Earth down there so they can kind of engage with them and all their stuff. And this is all a big plan by Chasm, which is, of course, Peter Parker's clone. I hate clone stories. And, of course, there's a little bit of a religious undertone because if Peter Parker eats the apple from <laughs> Chasm then uh, all this can stop, right? So it's really a story about willpower at the end of the day, right? Uh, but we do get introduced to Rick Rack, uh, who's another version of Spider-Man, because we don't have enough of that. We need more Spider-Man, especially one that's a demon. No, it's not frozen. I'm just stuck, because... So with all that said, it's kind of funny. It's kind of whimsical. You get a, a version of the Sinister Six in here called the uh, Sadistic Six. or It doesn't even matter. It's just so quirky and so weird that uh, and it's not really part of my reading. I, mean, I just really don't want to get too in-depth with it, to be honest with you. <laughs> all right, next. All right, Darth Vader number... 30. Now, we've all seen this cover, like, everywhere on social media. If you read comic books, collect comic books, watch any shows, you've seen this cover. So, if you don't know, um, <laughs> this is a mess. Here's why I think it's a mess, and it's probably not fair. I think they're trying to change the story of the Imperial Guards. If you don't remember the Imperial Guards, those are the guys that were dressed all in red, that kind of followed Dark Vader around. They were, um... Um, the Emperor's personal guards type of guys. I think this is their origin story, which would be incorrect if you did like five minutes worth of research. Now, I'm not like some huge Star Wars nerd that I know all the outlying lore of it, but when I read this, I was like, is that what's happening in this book? Did like five minutes on the old Google machine, and I was like, oh, I hope not, because that sounds more interesting. So, Basically, what happens in this story is Padme, you remember Padme from those Star Wars movies that we all loved and, you know, with the greatest hero of all time, Jar Jar Binks. Well, apparently her handmaidens uh, were like super elite soldiers as well. Whatever, okay. So, and they got a problem with Vader, but then Vader kind of coerces them into working with them because there's a greater threat, you know, yada, 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 right? It's... I just didn't enjoy it. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. And sometimes you just got to rewrite or redcon things. I get it. I just didn't enjoy it. Like, it just seems like such a... There's a saying down in our area. It's like trying to take a shortcut from your elbow to your asshole. Right? It, no matter what you do, it's going to be the same thing. Right? I don't know. I just didn't much care for it. Cool cover. It will go in a dollar bit auction. All right, next, Tiger Division. So here comes our first philosophical point that we mentioned in the beginning. All right, there is something that is always said when something, when somebody becomes successful, right? And then there's like crabs in the crab pot, right, trying to pull you down. They always say something to the effect of, uh, don't forget where you came from, or don't forget who your people are, or blah, 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 right? If this has been told to you, um, ignore those people. They're not out for your best interest. And we can use this comic book as an example why. So Taiwan in here, uh, of course, is going to go fly. He's kind of like the Korean Superman, I guess is the best way to put it. He's going to go fly. He sees his old buddy there. Him and his old buddy back in the day were like a little gangster, right? They would steal weapons and stuff like that. By the way, great job in this story. That, like visual locations of where stuff was. And it was just great. I, I really enjoy it. But moving on. 
And you got to understand the relationship between these two characters. That's going to be very important. They purposely use a word in here called Hyung. And in there, I don't think it gave the best description of the meaning of the word. Yes, it does mean brother or brother figure, something along those lines, between two people that aren't blood related. But the, it's more like what we would use here in America or the concept behind blood brothers, right? Like you're dedicated to that dude for life. It's a blood oath, the whole nine yards, right? It's kind of a deeper meaning, more rich feeling to it. Well, unfortunately, kids are kids, and kids do stupid stuff. And if you grow up and you're still doing stupid stuff and wondering why your friend's not doing stupid stuff with you, well, then you're stupid. How's that for an explanation? <laughs> like, legit, the guy's still breaking crime. He just knows how to do it legally now because of corporation steal or whatever nonsense the narrative tells him to say. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it's just the guy who got jealous because his friend went off and moved and did something better, and now he wants his power and his stuff because he thinks he's owed it. And that's that's a horrible way to think, right? If you're jealous because somebody's going off and doing something great, you were never their friend to begin with. One thing I always try to do is if my friends, like, open up a restaurant or something along those lines, you know, I always hear, you know, hey, maybe we'll get a discount there or a hookup. I'm like, no, this is my friend. I want to pay full price. I, I want to see my friend be successful. I don't want to hold my friends back. So I, I, like, I get what they're going with this book, and I absolutely, absolutely love it. Uh, next, Moon Knight. So this is another point that I want to hit on. So you have Moon Knight and you have Moon Hunter in here, and I think both of them are the greatest uh, examples, right? of the difference between being motivated to do something and having discipline to do something. Boone Hunter in this is obviously a disciplined person. This is his job, this is his mission, and it doesn't matter if he's religious, non-religious, discipline's discipline at the end of the day. And then whereas Moon Knight is more motivated to do it, so he's willing to take more risk. In this one we find out that the Moon Knights across the board can all actually at some point die. And that each time that they get brought back to life, it kind of trims off that time, which is a great concept. Nothing should last forever. Like, that's just a horrible existence. But more importantly, we get this great line because Zodiac's coming back. And I like Zodiac. I think Zodiac is an interesting character. I want to see more of this character. But he says this. He's talking about the USA and what the USA does better than anybody else in the world. And he's like, we bring jazz and comic books, right? Wink, wink. Right, But then he also says, something we do better here in the good old U.S. of A. more than anyone is super villainy. And i got to admit, when it comes to American comic books, we do have some interesting villains out there. A couple other things that we had that America has all kind of brought to the world. Denim jeans, rock and roll, things along those lines as well. But whatever, super villainy, I'll take it and we'll roll with it. What a great story. Great jumping on point as we hit another arc. All right, uh, last of the Marvel, we got Ghost Rider this week. The big battle between exhaust kind of just fizzled out on me. Um, didn't really work for me. I, I do like the ending to this where Blackhawk had, or Blackheart has actually kind of interceded demons throughout the U.S. to make everything corrupt and how easy it was because, you know, we're horribly corrupt people to begin with or, or whatever. Like, I get where you're going with it, but a little on the nose. Uh, but for the most part, um, this is okay. It's an okay ending. Uh, I don't know if they're going to be launching. Oh, yeah, they're going to be launching off because we got Johnny Blaze's Ghost Rider in here, and some government secret agency has Danny Ketch, who is the other Ghost Rider uh, throughout comic book lore. Uh, I think I'm done with Ghost Rider. Like, I've read, I followed this all the way from issue one. I followed this arc. I've enjoyed it, and I've spoken very highly of it, but the ending was just kind of fizzled out for me. It was like a, just a lot of filler in it instead of, you know, giving us the good stuff that we really wanted. And the stuff that we did want, you kind of just explained it away in a page or two. I don't know. Uh, I probably, unless something really cool happens, I'm probably going to be dumping Ghost Rider. Uh, next, Quested. This is from the One Not publication. You know, there's... Those people said <laughs> have become very popular in the comic book community over the last few months. But um, this is a quirky little story. I actually got a preview of this through their one shot, uh, one per store. And uh, basically, this is kind of a satire over questing, the whole quest idea, right? So there's a group of here that are so used to doing this at this point that they've predicted it, they've set it up, 
they put in a fake princess the whole nine yards and then this character comes in beats them up really quick but what happens when the tables are turned and what you're or what's supposed to happen doesn't happen right now you got a story which was pretty cool uh this is pretty surreal it's in your face um and then it's done in, you know, everybody loves their cartoon fashions. So it's done in that manner. Um, pretty simplistic story. I, not really deep into it. Um, but I could see where some people would rant and rave about this. Last pick of the week. And really, it's just a, it's just a retelling. <laughs> Grim Space. This is a spin on Grimm's Fairy Tales. And this one we talk about Jack and the Beanstalk. And they don't even bother hiding the names in this one. They're like the ship... The spaceship is called the Beanstalk. Jack is Jack in it. Uh, in this, instead of a cow, it's a robot that thinks he's alive. That becomes a key point later. Uh, he trades the broken robot for this navigator thing that everybody thinks is junk. It warps him into a space place where... Well, I want to say space place. They say it's off the charts. So what does it say space place? Yeah. Where there's a giant, they steal a golden egg, and like any other golden egg, it needs to hatch, they escape. But then, the same trader that traded the navigation device for the robot, a guy comes in, he's just looking for, like, you know, he wants a kid, or doesn't want a kid, but he wants, like, a companion. And the quirky thing about these robots is that they think that they're alive. See where this is going now? Yeah. Yeah, it's going, yeah, Pinocchio. So I want to see how well they can connect all these stories together. So if my comic book store shop gets more of these, I'll be picking up more of these. So uh, that's my haul for this week. Definitely let me know what you think in the comments down below. Um, don't forget, I have Coffee Brand Coffee down there, and I got a merch shop from the Evil Lair. Uh, Evil Lair Project is in the works over at my Evil Lair channel. We're going to do something kind of cool over there for a member of the community. So definitely uh, check that out as well. Um, but other than that, I got nothing else, folks. I'll talk to you all later. Bye.